So now I need to uh, thank uh, some people, the uh, Speaker, of course, yourself, uh, Mr. Assistant Speaker, the presiding officers, uh, and all those who uh, assist in the clerk's office, including uh, the new clerk, David Stevenson, uh, for all the effort that they make uh, to uh, keep the, the wheels of, uh, of Parliament uh, moving. No, I'm keeping it a very straight debate today, uh, Grant. Um, otherwise, I'd start spending endless amounts of time. David Stevenson? Oh, David Wilson. Sorry. Yeah, I would, well, thank goodness you're here. Um, so I do apologise to David Wilson. Uh, he knows who I meant. Um, <laughs> the two gentlemen are roughly the same height, um, although profile slightly different, and um, much like you and I, Grant. Can I just uh, tell you this story, Mr Speaker, that is illustrative of, I think, the note on which I end this year, which is a note of optimism. As I said before about buildings, there is another very important group who have been around the building, parliamentary buildings at least this year, which is the construction team from LT McGuinness, who are making perhaps the, the worst, leakiest building in the country waterproof yet again, giving us dry and healthy accommodation. Uh, we know them all, they are gathered around, well, I see them outside my third floor office, there they are in their high-vis vests and what have you. Um, what is most important is they will, they will leave a la lasting legacy in this House before the work that they do. But it's thanks to the actions of one of those men from LT McGuinness that, as I say, gives that air of optimism to me. I was at a meeting a, few, a couple of months ago getting one of the briefings from the head of one of our security agencies, an initiative actually that, that, that they undertook this year in fulfilment of their statutory obligations. And there we were looking at matters of great national sensitivity and security, and all of a sudden the head of the SIS who was briefing me threw her hands over the papers on the table and said, wait, is this place secure? <laughs> and we looked out on the balcony and there was one of the LT beginners men with his high-vis jacket on. As you all know, they've all got numbers on them. And there was the number, 007. <laughs> now, we established very quickly that it wasn't Daniel Craig, much to her disappointment, uh, disappointment I'm sure. Uh, and uh, we established that uh, MI6 probably does not have a great deal of interest in the leader of the opposition's office in New Zealand. But here is the point, Mr Speaker. Here is the note of optimism that after all the debate about the health and safety reform bill this year, all of our challenging the government, that this is not going to create the culture of health and safety. Here at least, at the highest levels of the public service here in Wellington, we have a senior public servant who genuinely believes that were James Bond to ever make it to New Zealand to do his nefarious things, he at least would be wearing his high-vis vest. And a very Merry Christmas too to the government. It has been a tough year for you fellas, what with increasing unemployment, oh it's true, 45,000 more children in poverty, the housing crisis, skyrocketing greenhouse gas emissions, but credit where credit is due, you have played to your strengths National and it's time now to recognise those strengths. So I am very pleased to announce the Green Party's inaugural end of year awards. I know, it's exciting. I have the nominations. So here we go. And we, might, we may well give you presents. Yeah, let's give them presents. I'll tell you what. My, my lovely assistant, Gareth, Gareth Hughes, over here. So to, for the ExxonMobil Contribution to Oil Drilling Award, the runner-up, Labour, for refusing to rule it out. <clears throat> but the winner goes to Simon Bridges for keeping the oil industry going through support of its hair products. <laughs> Great dedication, Simon. He can get some chocolates. Give them to Jerry. The, he wears his underpants on the outside uh, Public Defender Award, sponsored by Marvel Comics, goes to Michael Woodhouse for revealing to New Zealand the grave dangers of worm farms. Michael has got our, he's got our backs. We're safe under his watch. The Land Transport Association's Award for the most creative U-turn, it turns out. So runner-up, Labour, for simultaneous U-turns on capital gains tax and superannuation. But the winner, the Green Party. That's right, the Green Party, for ruling out, then ruling in, then ruling out the Booth Bill. I want my gift. <laughs> thank you, I'm so proud. I want to thank my producers, mum and dad. You're awesome. The award for the most dedicated backbencher politician. This was hard fought for this one, I can tell you. Runner-up, Paul Foster Bell, for his passionate visual adoration during the Prime Minister's speeches. Puppy dog! But the winner goes to Mike Hosking for selfless support for his dear leader and
in the creative use of public broadcasting. Oh, we're liking you. <laughs> the Lump of Coal Special Christmas Award, sponsored by Charles Dickens. Jointly awarded to John Key and Peter Dunn for voting against feeding the kids in school. <laughs> Clearly the answer to the question, please sir, can I have some more, is no, you cannot have any more. The New Zealand Men's Rights Association Award for the Protection of Traditional Values. Runner up, John Key for having the guts to say out loud that Cabinet is dominated by middle-aged white men because he appoints on the basis of merit. Ladies, smarten up. But the winner goes to Louise Upston, the first women's affairs minister brave enough to define feminism as bad and beauty contests as good. Well done, Louise. But the chocolate prize is going to go to Putta Williams for her amazing support over the walkout over the rapist's comments. Awesome. <laughs> chocolate well deserved. The Hairstylist Association of New Zealand International Hair Ambassador of 2015 Award. Who do you think might win this? <laughs> runners up, runners up, Peter Dunn and Simon Bridges for effort. Good effort, guys. But the winner by a landslide. John Key for putting New Zealand and ponytails on the world stage for all the wrong reasons. Well done, you guys. And, oh, no, not quite finally. The Foot and Mouth Award, sponsored by MPI for most regrettable statement. The winner, Judith Collins. I am confident that Circo will bring the highest standards of professionalism, safety, rehabilitation and security expected by the government to Mount Eden Prison. Well, wasn't she right? They did expect that. That's exactly what they got. But the gift of chocolate goes to Kelvin Davis, given today's breaking news. That was a scout worth fighting for. And the final award, sir, for tonight the Plunkett Karatani Award for Healthy Development and Meeting All Growth Milestones. And that goes to my very own co-leader, James Shaw, for, well, just being a good all-round boy. So thank you very much. We should say that this has been a most momentous year for the government, and they should be given credit. But on examination of the list of success stories, we ran into a roadblock. <laughs> Ponytail gate. The nail failed twice. The surplus after seven years creative accounting and back to deficit the next quarter. The TPPA sold the public a lemon and not much about trade. The Iroquois sold to the Yanks and not our own people. The flag with all the levitation of a lead balloon. Uh, the housing bubble in Auckland, but only consents, no new houses, of course. The Nick Smith PR tour that ran into a deed of ownership that wasn't the government's in the first place. Uh, the uh, Sky City outsmarting the PM, another shonky deal. Uh, Mr Key wearing various hats, sometimes when he puts the cat out. Uh, Philip John Smith taking a holiday in Brazil. And then you've got the Malaysian diplomat, but no apology. Detainees on Christmas Island being sold out because the PM wants to be an Aussie PM groupie. Uh, the PM telling everybody what he does in the shower. The Circo Fight Clubs. The Crusher Collins comeback after Oravida, that's unbelievable. The biosecurity cutbacks and then the levies on all travellers to try and make up for the cut. Logs and milk, two products in a declining market. The worm farms, health and safety risks. Silver ferns farms, corrupt deal. The Saudi farm, corrupt bribe. The capping of the super gold card travel program. The solid energy collapse, used to be an SOE star and then the so-called $25 increase in benefits while they took the acts to the welfare and all the other budgets as well. And then, of course, you have the Redcliffe School where you ignored the parents in Christchurch. But the real thing is they hit their big star performance in Northland in March. A team of strategists, ministerial cars, spin doctors, Crosby Texter, cabinet ministers, and the Prime Minister going there three or four times. He's on every hoarding, 500 of them, and then the master planner st strategist, Mr Fixit, Stephen Joyce. <laughs> now that poor candidate up there, Mark Osmond, didn't have a hope in the Hades. Remember we said, they said we had a dog's chance. Well, up went Mr Joyce, he gave it his best shot, and they came up way short. You see, what happened up there was the people up north had been lacking an MP standing up for them for years. And they started to get one. Oh, yes, really. 
Well, why don't you front up? I, I, I saw that member up at the, uh, up at the show in Waimati North, and no one knew who he was. He had, a, he, he had a badge on, and no one was shaking his hand. And I felt so sorry, I really did. Now, look, I just want to say this. I just want to say this on the national stage. On the international stage, Tim Grosser has been an embarrassment. He's been an embarrassment. It is clear from informed sources that he gets his information from watching, he gets his information from watching the Weather Girls on TV at, at six o'clock news every night. <laughs> and the Prime Minister's had a, found it very hard going. You see, Prime Minister, you can't run a country through photos on Facebook. Drinking beer out of a bottle doesn't make you a Kiwi bloke. Haunting the All Blacks in the changing room is an embarrassment to them as well. Especially when you don't know one end of the paddock from the other. Especially when you never played the game of rugby. No talent whatsoever. And Jerry's never played rugby either. I mean, no, you, you ask Jimbo who can play rugby around here. Jimbo can, and we can. But they can't. Very short on talent. And here's the Prime Minister's many hats. National Party leader, all black baggage handler, international freedom fighter, golf cart caddy for the United States President. The list is endless. Prime Minister, our relationship with the United States is not going to be enhanced by you giving President Obama the number five iron. Or a three handshake. Or a putter. Or a three handshake, but there's only two of you there. <laughs> and the audacity to tell the Labour Party to get some guts and courage over ISIS. Look, political leadership is about policies. It's not about sabre rattling. Especially when you are thousands of miles away from the danger. And while our troops are overseas in situations of danger, under a flag, why sell that flag down the drain? It's inappropriate. It's insulting. And the reception being given to this arrogant rebranding exercise, it's all over, over. Stop wasting any more millions. Quit while you're behind. Because the burnout is so low, with all the millions of dollars they put into it, and if he goes on, it'll show that he is all about personal arrogance and self-interest. You see, it's been, what did the Queen call it? An annus horribilis for the Blue Brigade.